Hello everyone and welcome to another Corona tutorial. In this one we'll be taking a look at the new Corona Sky object which replaces the old Corona Sky tag from versions that were released before Corona version 5. Alright, so creating and putting Corona Sky in your scenes is basically still the same. You just need to go under the plugins menu and select it from the trap down here. And just by doing that we now have the Corona Sky object in our scene. Now the UI itself got streamlined and at the same time easier to use, but it also offers some extra functionality, so let's take a closer look at it. As you can see, by default it comes in as a physical sky type, and as you would expect, all the settings right below the type segment here pertain to this particular sky type. So because right now it is set to be a physical sky type, which by the way is an emulation of a real world sky, uh, because it is set like that we get the relevant controls for it. Uh, like the sky model, horizon blur, ground color, and a place where we can link a sun object to so that both are linked to each other. But more on this functionality a bit later on in the tutorial, as it's mainly there for when you're working with light mix and multiple environments. Okay, now, if we were to switch from the physical sky to, say, a simple color, well, now that physical sky emulation gets replaced by just a single color. So this is pretty much an equivalent of having one giant light shining on your scene from every direction with a given color. Now in this particular case of an interior render where we want to have our lighting be as realistic as possible, this probably isn't such a good effect. But one scenario of where you could totally use this option is for example in a studio setup where typically you'd want a bit of an ambient lighting that is constant and flat. Right, so now you've probably noticed that a set of options stuck with us as we've changed the sky type. And these are these options down here, which are basically your compositing options. So what you can do is, for example, you can disable the sky from being visible, but you still want it to emit light. So like this. Or, you know, you don't want it to show up in the reflections or refractions, or you just don't want it to be affecting global illumination at all. Now These compositing options aren't anything new, really you were already able to access them in the previous versions too, with the help of the Corona compositing tag. So basically, this guy right here. What's different now is that you have easier access to them because they're available right in your Corona Sky object. So you don't need to fiddle around with the compositing tag that much anymore. Now with that covered, let me just quickly reset the visible settings here. Okay, so let's explore the other sky type that we have here, and that is the shader slash HDRI type. This one is probably the most often used one right after the physical sky, because it enables you to put in your shaders or HDRIs and light your scenes with them. Now let's tackle working with HDRIs first here, because that workflow has changed from what it was before Corona version 5. If you've worked with the previous versions, you'll probably remember that you had to create a Corona light material, put the HDRI in it, and then you'd apply it to the sky object. Well, now what you need to do in order to light your scenes with your HDRI is to go into the Corona Sky object, make sure it's set to shader slash HDRI type, and then in here, plug in that HDRI texture. So let me do that real quickly. So just drop it in and wait for the interactive render to refresh. And there we go. That's pretty much it. Now, because we're using the HDRI, I'm just going to quickly switch to a different camera so that uh, we get a more pleasing image in the VFB here. But in essence, that's pretty much how you set up your HDRIs. You can now rotate the HDRIs uh, using the offset U and V values here. So, for example, if I rotate it on the U axis to about 60% here, you're going to see that the HDRI indeed does rotate. Now, you can also scale the HDRI uh, using the scale U and scale V values here, but I won't do that because honestly, it's looking just fine as it is. Now, furthermore, if you ever want to change the projection type, well, uh, that is now also available to you through this drop down menu here. So you've got your spherical projection, cubic projection, and frontal projection, and you can select whichever one matches the format of your image. And because I'm using the spherical HDRI, I have it set to be using the spherical projection. Right, 
So that's pretty much the new HDRI workflow. Now we don't necessarily recommend it, but if you'd really want to follow the previous workflow, you could also apply your Corona Light Material HDRI to the new Corona Sky object and that would still work. So I have a Corona Light Material here to which I'm just going to quickly plug in the HDRI. There we go. And I'm going to apply it to our Corona Sky object. Now, if you are sticking to the previous workflow, uh, please make sure your projection in your uh, material setting here is set to the correct one. So the one that's matching your HDRI format. So again, because I'm using a spherical HDRI, I'm just going to use a spherical projection here. One thing that you also notice is that if I go into the Corona Sky object here, it now tells me that it is essentially being overwritten by the applied material, which is our Corona Light material with the HDRI applied to it. Now again, we don't really recommend using this workflow, but it is there for compatibility reasons. Right, let me just delete this Corona Light material here and go back into the Corona Sky object settings. Well, now I want to show you one extra thing. Besides using HDRIs, there is also the option to use shaders. And the idea of it all is pretty simple. Let's just quickly delete the HDRI here. And instead of it, let's put in a gradient shader. And now this bad boy will light your scene accordingly. So in our interior example here, that's probably not very useful. But for something like a studio environment, well, then you can easily create a nice little soft gradient, which will light up the scene for you. And it doesn't have to be a gradient. It can be pretty much anything else like noises or checkerboards or whatever you like. So quite, quite useful. Now, one of the main reasons why the new Corona Sky object got to be is because now you can use multiple different environments in the same image using Lightmix. So we're still in the same scene here, but I've added a couple of new Corona Sky objects. And in them, you'll see I have a couple of HDRIs. Now, you can probably clearly already tell what kind of lighting each of these has. As I have a Sunset HDRI in the HDRI Sunset Corona Sky object, and in the Noon object, I have a Noon HDRI, and in the Nighttime object, I have a Nighttime HDRI. Right, so now if I go and try to set up my light mix, what I can do is I can put each of these Corona Sky objects into their own light select pass, which means I'll be able to control each of them individually. So let's quickly set up our light mix here. So I'm going to go under the available passes and I'm going to bring in a light mix pass and a light select pass. I'm going to re rename this light select pass to be called HDRI Sunset. And in here, I'm going to track the HDRI Sunset Corona Sky object. I do want denoising applied, so I'll take that. And then I'm just going to copy it and rename it to be called HDRI Noon. And in here, I'm going to put my Noon Corona Sky object. Again, repeat the same process for the nighttime one. So rename it, remove this one, and bring in the nighttime one. Now we do have a couple of uh, ceiling lights in our scene as well. So I'm going to bring in another light select uh, pass in here. I'm going to call it ceiling lights. And I'm going to apply denoising and bring those ceiling lights in there. Right, there we go. But there is one extra very, very important thing we need to set up here. And that is we need to disable the adaptive light solver. So I'll go under the render settings, under Corona and under the performance settings, and you'll see we have this adaptive light solver toggle here. And what I want to do is I want to disable it. So what it does is it basically trades the speed boost of the adaptive light solver for the extra freedom to have multiple environments in our light mix setup. Here's a quick overview of the potential issues you might encounter with it being turned on. And this is how it looks like when it's turned off. Again, do note, this is only applicable for when you're doing some heavy duty light mixing with multiple environments. If you're not using multiple environments, you don't need to disable the adaptive light solver. Okay, so uh, we'll start this render off, but to spare you the waiting time, we'll fast forward this part of the tutorial here. All right, so this is the rendered image. And if I open up the pass list here and scroll through my HDRIs, 
Well, now you can see that all of these are coming in, lighting the scene, and so basically we have multiple environment lighting scenarios baked into our single render. So if we go under light mix here, and for example, if I wanted to create a sort of a bright noon shot of this bathroom, well, then I could simply disable the two HD arrays that I don't need. And maybe I could tweak the ceiling lights intensity a little bit. So maybe drop it to something around a value of 0.5 or so. And then I could mess around with the tone mapping settings here. So maybe we could up the exposure a little bit because it is noon. And maybe we could crank up the filmic highlights just a little bit to get that soft highlight look. So something like this, perhaps. And before you know it, you might get a result that you like. So then what you want to do is you can save the image off. Right. So that's one shot. How about we want the same interior, but in a more sunset -y type of a setting? Well, sure, no problem. In the light mix tab, I'll disable the noon HDRI and I'll enable the sunset one. Now, I could tweak its intensity just a little bit, so maybe I could dim it. Or maybe I could dim it a lot, actually. Maybe a value of 0 0.1 will do. And now I can go back into the tone mapping menu here and maybe just give it a slight bump in contrast to something of a value of like 1.5. And you know what, I think I'll also tweak the highlight compression here. I'll just put it to a value of 1.5. So with just a few of those tweaks, this could be our second image. So now I could save this one too. And by now, you've probably realized how powerful this is. In front of you, you can see that we've ended up with three distinct images. And the beauty of it is, we only rendered everything one single time. So it's just one rendered image. So you can see now, how you can use the new Corona Sky object to have multiple environments in your light mix. Now granted, something like this to an extent was possible before as well, but you were limited to just one single environment, which obviously caused quite a few issues if you went from a super bright to a nighttime render and things like that. It just wasn't as precise, as controllable, and as effective. With the updated workflow, you can now simply put in a daytime HDRI in one Corona Sky object and a nighttime one in another and get awesome control over them both in light mix. And that way you can get awesome results really quickly. And this not only works with HDRIs, but also with physical Corona Skies and Corona Suns. If you take a look at the object manager now, you can see that we have a bunch of Corona Skies in here and also a bunch of Corona Suns. Now the suns are slightly different between each other because each is positioned uniquely so that we can get different direct lighting effects going on. But the corona skies, well, they are just your basic default physical skies and they're all the same between each other. Thing to note here is that because we are using multiple environments again, we have already disabled the adaptive light solver before we've rendered out the image. Now speaking of the image, this is the rendered image. And now if I go into my light mix settings here, I can start playing around again. So let's say we want to come up with a morning shot here. Well, in that case, I can disable all but the Corona Sun called the morning sun. And I can do the same with the skies here. And just by doing that, I can now focus on the details. So maybe the sun could be a little stronger. So I'm going to up its intensity to around a value of 1.5 or so. And then I think we could also tweak its temperature a little bit. And because it's a morning sun, we could make it a little less warm, something like this. And okay, well, this looks great for the morning shot already. We can save it and move on to the next setup, which could be the evening shot. Why not, right? So again, we can come up with numerous different images that span vastly different times of day and moods, and they all derive from that original render. You can mix multiple different environments, including HDRIs with Corona suns or Corona physical skies, and just come up with combinations really quickly without having to re-render. That means one render can equal a lot of images. Now there is a disclaimer here. Whenever you have multiple skies, suns, and lights, and you're trying to light mix them, and especially when those light sources are of drastically different intensities, you will need to render the image out for a longer period of time, as otherwise you'll have more noise in certain areas of your image because Corona only takes the beauty pass into consideration when calculating an image. And so once you do your light mix twigs, certain areas might not be noise-free and you'll need to render the image for a longer period of time 
or have it render many more passes. So essentially, with light mix, you're probably lighting up an area that Corona thought was not going to be lit up, because in the beauty pass, it was not. Now, one extra feature that we've kind of barely touched but is really useful with Lightmix is the sun linking in the new Corona Sky object. So basically, if we take a look at the object manager here, we can see that we have a couple of skies and suns for two different times of day. Now, we do have the interactive render running here, and if I focus on the noon sun and sky here, you can see that they don't quite exactly match. Now, forget about the exposure in this image, we're purely focusing on the sun and the sky here that sky doesn't really look like a noon sky would. Well, what we could easily do to match the sky to the sun is, we could go into the noon corona sky object here and link up the matching sun to it by just dragging and dropping it right here where it says sun. Now as the interactive renderer refreshes, focus on the sky here, and there you go. You can see it has now changed and is now matching our sun. So basically, the Corona Sky takes the position of the Corona Sun into the account when it's being generated. And so this is looking like it should. Now for the dusk shot, we already have the two linked, as you can see. And if I enable that setup in my light mix here, like this, well now you can see that they look as you'd expect them to. But one cool thing about the two being linked is that if I now, for example, change the angle of the Sun, Well now, as you can see, the sky will also update accordingly. So, again, this is a really useful feature for when you're working with multiple corona skies and multiple corona suns and you want to light mix them. Don't forget though that by default, the corona sky will adapt to the corona sun just fine in the beauty pass even if the two aren't linked. This feature is more or less just intended to be used with light mix as the corona sky wouldn't otherwise adapt to the corona sun's position. Right, now before we conclude this tutorial, let's just quickly take a look at another new feature that you'll probably use with the new Corona Sky object from time to time, and that is the added support for Cinema 4D's background object. So in this scene, we have a super simple Corona Sun and Sky system setup, but now let's say we wanted to add a custom background to the image here. Well, to do that, we can bring in a Cinema 4D's background object and apply our background material to it which in our case uh, just has a simple HDRI in it, which is being color corrected just to better fit our scene here. Now, because we have the Corona Sky object be visible, the two operate and mix together using the additive mode. And so we don't really see much happening here. If we wanted to only see the background we pulled in here, then we need to go under the Corona Sky object settings here and disable the visible directly option. And voila, we can now see the background and its material. It's set up uh, to use the frontal projection mode because that's the type of the image that I'm using. But depending on the image format that you're working with, obviously you can change it up according to your needs. Okay, great. That pretty much covers the gist of the new Corona Sky object. It is streamlined, easier to use, and still very powerful. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you in the next one.